In this video, we're going to be talking about solving absolute value equations. Before we get into absolute value equations, let's do a quick refresher on just what absolute values are. And If you remember, absolute values always make things positive because they're represented by the distance from zero. For example, if we had absolute value of negative three, that would equal to positive three because negative three is three spaces from zero. Let's say we had absolute value of two minus five. We could simplify this two minus five into a negative three. That would give us an absolute value of negative three, which overall would give us a positive three because negative three is, again, three spaces from zero. Let's say we had uh, absolute value of negative two minus absolute value of five. Well, we could simplify this to absolute value of negative two is positive two. Absolute value of five is five. That would give us a two minus five, which would give us a negative three. Let's say we had absolute value of negative 12 divided by four. That would give us the absolute value of negative 12 divided by four is negative three, which, whoa, we really like those absolute value of negative threes. Again, that's going to be positive three, because negative three is, again, three spaces from zero. If we had absolute value of four times the absolute value of negative five, that would be four times absolute value of negative five is five, which would be 20. So remember, absolute value always is the distance from zero makes anything inside it positive. Let's think back to when we had the absolute value of x equals 2. Remember, we want to find what value of x will be two spaces from 0. Before, we discovered that absolute value of negative 2 was equal to 2, and then also the absolute value of positive 2 was equal to 2. So, whenever we have an absolute value equation, if we want to solve, we can take what's inside the absolute value, in this case, would be x, and we set it equal to both the negative and the positive of what it equals. So this would give us x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2, which we know is true. In this case, we have absolute value of x equals 17. So let's take that x and set it equal to a negative 17. And then we'll also take that x and set it equal to a positive 17, because whatever's in here has to be 17 spaces from 0. So here we've got absolute value of x minus 3 equals 5. Just because this is a little fancier inside here, we don't just have an x, we've got an x minus 3, it still doesn't change the concept of absolute value. We want whatever is equal to here to be 5 spaces from 0. So that means we want x minus 3 to equal a negative 5, because negative 5 is 5 spaces from 0. And we also want x minus 3 to equal positive 5. From there, we could just solve like we normally would. That would give us an x equals negative 2. And if we solve this side over here, we'll get x equals 8. And we've got both of our answers. And if we wanted to, we could plug those back in and, and verify that indeed those are true. Here we've got absolute value of x divided by 2 minus 3 equals 6. Again, we want whatever's inside the absolute value to equal 6 spaces from 0. So that would be x over 2 minus 3 equals negative 6. And then x over 2 minus 3 equals positive 6. Solving here, we'd add 3, add 3. That would give us x over 2 equals uh, negative 3. Over here, same thing, add 3, add 3. That would give us x over 2 equals 9. Then we can times by 2, times 2 times 2. We'll get x equals negative 6. And if we times 2 on this side, times 2 times 2, we'll get x equals 18. And there is both our answers. All right, seems like you're getting the hang of it. But if our absolute values get a little bit more complex, let's say we had absolute value of x minus 3 equals 10. Now in this case, everything here is not inside the absolute value. So 
really important note here, add this to the list you keep on your fridge of math concepts. Before solving for any absolute values, always get the absolute value by itself. Get the absolute value by itself. So in this problem, we've got our absolute value here, and outside of the absolute value, we have a minus 3. So before we split off to the positive and the negative, let's get our absolute value by itself by adding 3 to both sides. So this is going to leave us with absolute value of x equals 13. From here, it's just like the ones we've been solving. We want x to equal negative 13 and x to equal positive 13 because both of those values are 13 spaces from 0. Let's do one more example. Here we've got 5 times the absolute value of x plus 6 minus 10 equals 25. <sighs> All right, first we got to get this absolute value by itself. So we want to solve this just like we would solve the equation 5x minus 10 equals 25. Let's start by adding this 10 to both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and clear some space up for us. Okay, let's go ahead and add 10 to both sides. That's going to leave us with 5. Absolute value of x plus 6 equals 25 plus 10 is 35. Next, let's divide by this 5. Divide by this 5. That's going to leave us with x. Absolute value of x plus 6 equals 7. Now, we've got our absolute value by itself. Let's go ahead and split off. We want x plus 6 to equal negative 7 and x plus 6 to equal positive 7. That's 7 spaces from 0. So solving, we'll get x equals negative 13. That's a beautiful negative 13. Let me... There we go, negative 13. And x is going to equal... One. All right, I know I said that was the last one, but I just love these so much. Got to do one more. Here we've got absolute value of 2 plus x equals negative 3. All right, so let me go ahead and split this up. That's going to give me 2 plus x equals negative 3, and 2 plus x equals positive 3, because remember, we want to be negative 3 spaces from 0. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I totally forgot. Remember, whenever we have an absolute value equal to a negative, we have a no solution because we can never have no, we can never be negative distance from zero. So I did all this work for nothing. The real answer to this one is no solution. Always keep your eye open whenever you have an absolute value equal to negative. These are probably the shortest problems you could solve because you don't have to do anything. You just write no solution. But they're also tricky because a lot of people they accidentally solve like a normal absolute value as if it was equal to a positive. So watch out for those.